Welcome to today's Creative Morning in Berlin. Um, I really have to say I'm uh, thrilled with the interest in my talk today since the project I'm presenting you is just only a few months old. But maybe it's just because of the free coffee and the croissants that you're here. Um, so since the topic of this month is urbanism, um, before I introduce myself to you, I'd like to raise a question. So why is that the Creative Morning series always and only takes place in the big cities all around the world, like New York, Paris or Berlin. So just keep this question in mind throughout the following talk when speaking about creativity in the city. <clears throat> so my name is Jessica Jungbauer and I'm a freelance writer in the fields of culture, food and travel. Um, by the way, but actually the real reason why I moved to Berlin is that I'm also still a student at the Freie Universität in Berlin. Um, but within the next year, I will be graduating with a master's degree in literary studies. Um, but why I'm here today is that I launched the online magazine Best Wishes from Berlin only a few months ago. I don't know if you're already familiar with it, but basically it's a story collection of creatives inspired by the city. Um, since so many people come to live here and to be creative in the city. Um, so what led to the idea of launching the online magazine and how people engage with the project and moreover how creatives um, get inspired by the city is what I'm presenting you today. So <clears throat> first of all, when speaking about urbanism, I'd like to introduce to you some facts um, from the German philosopher Georg Simmel. Um, he was born in Berlin and he examined the city life at the beginning of the last century. Um, and this is at the same time the definition for this talk today about urbanism, that um, the effect and the influences the city life has on its inhabitants themselves. Um, so let's have a look. Simmel pointed out three main effects the city life has on people's personality. The first one is the so-called blasé outlook, which means that the more we see and do, um, the lesser we really respond to that. And this goes along with a greater indifference towards our surroundings. Like we will become, so we don't experience the city life as active as before and become indifferent towards new events or meeting new people. And another reason for that is the anonymity we experience in the city. So Simmel points out that we will become antisocial and self-centered human beings in the city. So although this looks like it isn't really going well for us, I would say that especially when you live in a city as a creative, um, you get your inspiration either from within or from your surroundings. So the people and places you surround yourself with. And especially in Berlin, inspiration lies on the street right in front of you. So what do I mean with that? Instead of the blasé outlook, the indifference and the anonymity in the city, we as creatives can turn this around. So by paying attention and wandering around the streets with open eyes, uh, one gets ideas and gets inspired by the city. And not only by connecting with the places, but Moreover, with the people of the city, um, we really experience the city life. And we will see this also in a second when we read through some stories of creatives who has been inspired by Berlin. Like I already mentioned before, uh, people from around the world come to live in Berlin and there seems to be a certain spirit that almost calls them to come here. Looking at this slide and judging on successfully funded projects on the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter, uh, within Germany, Berlin is clearly leading in creativity. 
So other than uh, these five cities, there were only two or less projects successfully funded compared to the almost 70 projects uh, in Berlin. So why are so many creatives moving to Berlin? This was the question I had in mind when planning my project. I asked myself where they come from and I wanted to get a sneak peek into their creative lives in the city. Um, because for me, the inspiring and aspiring atmosphere really lives from all the people who come here with ideas like pop-up bakeries, um, street food feasts or living room concerts. Speaking of which, how did I actually come up with the idea? So when I lived here for some months, I moved to Berlin last October. I attended a small living room concert and while being in the middle of the German capital, everybody was talking English there because there were people from the US, from France, from Spain and um, I was really amazed, amazed by the international atmosphere coming from a small town near the Swiss border where I by myself barely couldn't, de couldn't understand the German language anymore. So it was really an inspiring experience and I immediately thought about why all these people are here. So still at the concert and even if it was a little bit unpolite, I took out my smartphone and typed in all these ideas I had in this exact moment. And um, in the background, there was still this singer-songwriter music playing. And uh, when I think about it today, I still have this butterflies in my stomach because it really was also one of the first moments I really felt at home in Berlin. And since then, my enthusiasm for living here has only got bigger. So with this energy since then, I couldn't wait with starting my online magazine. But first I had to find a name, which can be really challenging when the only thing you want to do is to get your idea out into the world as soon as possible. But it wasn't too difficult. So I really wanted to have Berlin in it um, because um, then you know from the beginning that it is a project from and about Berlin. And then I imagined all the expats writing messages to their home countries and greeting their family and friends. And so Best Wishes from Berlin was born. And then I realized that Best Wishes can also mean like warmly recommended. So for me, this describes um, the creative scene in Berlin, which is right now known all around the world. And then only after I chose the name, I realized that um, the wishes in the name can also stand for the wishes that come true when following your own heart. So what makes the project so special? In our digital age, where everything gets faster and the tweets get shorter, um, the self-written stories on Best Wishes from Berlin really inhabit a great authenticity. So other than some grammar or spelling mistakes, I don't edit anything. So the readers really can um, identify with the stories and hopefully get inspired again. There are only some questions for inspiration I send with my emails, like how did you first came up with the idea of moving to Berlin? What expectations did you have? Um, did you feel at home in Berlin right away? But whenever I get a story back with the question, is it okay or should I edit anything? I say, of course it's okay because it's your own story. So first I thought about doing interviews. Um, but since I was attending a seminar at university called Digital Storytelling, it was like um, a light bulb, light bulb moment when I realized I wanted to portray um, creatives in a different way by letting them telling their stories. So the thing is that when me being a freelance writer would write them down, it would always be the same way I used to write a story. But um, everybody has his or her own voice and even when, when they are not journalists or bloggers, you can really tell the difference between the stories on Best Wishes from Berlin. So if it's the time they decide to start with their story or how they describe the feelings or just a simple smiley or exclamation mark, it really makes a difference and makes you get to know the person behind the project. So then my favorite part um, of the project has become meeting all these creatives in Berlin. Um, I say it has become on purpose because at first I thought about letting them um, sending me the self-taken photos with their self-written stories. So it would have been basically me sitting behind the screen and doing nothing. 
And this is when I figured out I had to step out of my comfort zone and get out into the world and meet the people for best wishes from Berlin. Um, because while writing more about places as a freelance writer, I didn't have this situation where I met with almost strangers to me only via email contact. So, but now it really felt um, natural to me and um, almost every time I walk away with a smile on my face because it is really like I experienced the city. So not only through my mind, but also through the eyes of the others. Um, at the same time, this way the website functions as a guide for the creative Berlin. And in the following month, uh, there will be some added features like some more photos about the places and um, also descriptions about the places and why are these places the favorite places from the people of Berlin. So launching this project as an online magazine really made sense to me because spreading the stories via social media really is the key. Um, since storytelling really has experienced a renaissance in our digital daily life, um, spreading the stories and so telling the stories, but moreover sharing these um, enables a wider readership. So all in all, what I can really say so far from my experiences, just start your project. Um, you can't plan everything, but eventually everything will fall into place. Um, so when I first started contacting creators for Best Wishes from Berlin, um, the feedback has been really enthusiastic and I didn't expect it because the creatives have to sit down and write down their own stories. Um, but I thought it's really worth to give it a try. Um, and I'm really happy that most of the people responded that they like to take part in the project. And then another thing I experienced was the great support within the creative scene in Berlin. So people retweeted and shared the news even before the launch of my online magazine. And I really had the feeling of, although this might be a big city, it almost feels like a small town because whenever I met with a creative, they suggested me another creative to feature, but I already had contact him, contacted him or her. So it really was this feeling of connection, although being in a big city. And then the uh, so far two most spreading responses was an interview with B Berlin, the campaign of the city, and now my talk for Creative Mornings in Berlin. So now before we have a look at some of the stories, uh, there is one question I get asked about all the time. How do I actually come up with the creatives to feature on Best Wishes from Berlin? So I have to say it's just that I'm always interested in staying up to date. So like when I uh, was asked as a child what I wanted to become in life, uh, I always said like Carla Columna, so the curious reporter um, with her camera from the childhood series um, Benjamin the Elephant. So since then I guess it is just really my nature to always wanting to be in the news and whether it's, it, is re it is me reading blogs or reading posts on Facebook from pages I liked or just um, exchanging the latest music tips with my dad via email for years. So the inspiration and connection the internet provides is really great and I couldn't imagine running a project like this without it. So once I stumble upon um, something that inspires me, whether it is the voice, um, the sound of the voice in a blog post or capturing a moment in a photograph, um, I always immediately know when I found someone to feature. And still every time I cross my fingers that they want to, that they are up for it as well. Um, but now let's have a look at some of the stories with some of the main quotes to summarize how Berlin inspires. So the first story was by Svenja Paulsen, a photographer and creator of Places Project De, where she portrays the smaller, uh, the smaller but only more special places of Berlin. And I found her via Instagram when I discovered her beautiful photography and just, just asked her if, she, if she'd like to take part. So although she's from Germany already, for me it's still interesting to see how Berlin is seen within Germany and when coming from the same country. And she says she gets inspired by the people behind the places who often turn their passion into their profession. So like at Süßkram dealer where we met to take the photo. 
I was also really happy to have Gourmandise Berlin on board for best wishes, a French and German team who thought that if they don't open their first pop-up bakery in Berlin, then where else? So for them, Berlin was and still is the best city to come up with your own idea and start a business. They already had their fourth pop-up bakery, uh, where they just pop up at a special place in Berlin, um, which will be announced via social media. And then they sell their baked goods to already a lot of people waiting in line. So, of course, their favorite place was uh, a, patis a small patisserie called Les Patisseries de Sébastien at Invalidenstrasse. And then one of the first creators really getting back to me, although I already wondered if I should indeed contact him, was James Glazebrook from the blog Überlin. Um, so far as I know, it's one of the most it's one of the biggest English-speaking blogs of Berlin um, out there, which he writes together with, with his wife, Zoe. And I felt very happy to have this story featured on Best Wishes from Berlin. And like they focus especially on the expert perspective on their blog, James said that Berlin always feels new to us in some way. Another story so far was by Eileen Liefeld, a photographer, but she also runs her own food blog called I Cuisine. Um, being a reader of her blog, I just contacted her if she'd like to take part and gladly she said yes. So we met at her favorite place, Café Fleury in Mitte. And for her, being a creative, especially a photographer, makes you see things. Furthermore, she says, you find motivation in little things and get inspired by people, street corners, street art, or just light that keeps creating interesting shapes and shadows. And then there was the story by Hannah Skog, a photographer and graphic designer from Sweden. Um, I was also really glad to have found her via Instagram. Um, we met at Aunt Benny and really talked for hours and hours. So for her, um, she points out that it feels like you can explore Berlin for a lifetime. So sometimes one can feel overwhelmed with the size and the opportunities of the big city, but at the same time, it is really like a treasure trove for ideas. So to read the whole stories, of course, visit bestwishesfromberlin.com. But what we can see so far from scrolling through the stories and hopefully many more to come, Never stop with being amazed by your surroundings. What I mean with that, and this is not only referring to Berlin, but um, living in a city in general, and I guess being a human being, uh, it's really the key to not only discover or explore a city, but really experience it. And oftentimes we find ourselves running around and running errands, um, but there's always something worth noticing at every, and sometimes when you least expect it. And so, just leave your smartphones in your pockets from time to time and start seeing your surroundings again because um, the people and places uh, they are which make living in a big city. And so with that, thank you so much for listening and now go out and get inspired by Berlin. <laughs>